So hello guys, welcome back to my channel and save the best for last I guess what they have used the 2022 Peugeot 3008. So <laughs> the front is exactly the same as the 5008, even the front fascia. The only differences are is at the rear. I mean the I mean the entire year since this is what 110 millimeters shorter than the 5 because this is no longer a seven seater and yeah sitting in front here yeah it feels exactly the same and as well sitting there in the back although it's still spacious enough but it's not as spacious as the 5 but better than the 2 I have reviews of those by the way and less toys there as well in the second you only have what 12 volt socket here rather than and controls for your air conditioning vent now but as I say again space there in the back is alright and as well the boot space is much less than that of the 5 but more than the 2 8 so driving this thing now just checking all the controls yeah it's exactly the same however this is the main difference now it is now shorter right I feel this is a little bit more agile than the 5.08 so let's find out at faster paces in a bit but NBH, tire noise pretty much the same and as well here like the ambient lighting here in the door or on the sunroof oh yeah and the ambient lighting here as well I, even, I didn't even mention that in the 5.08 so what you heard there is actually like a fighter jet what warning that's actually if the key is not present from the vehicle so driving it a bit more so i just cut it since it was a little bit more traffic than usual so there's pretty much the same like low speeds so on and so forth around the, here in alabang as the 5008 not as composed just being honest as the 2008 but this one's pretty good as well i gotta say Oh, so I didn't explain this as well in my 5W8 review. It will automatically upshift. Wow. Okay. So, shout out to Egan Sirs, by the way. He was able to have lend out of both 5W8 and 3W8. I kind of understand what he meant now. At higher speeds, yes, this will go at high speeds pretty quickly. However, I did notice. The 5AA is just a little bit more stable than this. However, the trade-offs, that's because of the shorter wheelbase. And, unlike the 5AA, this one is much more agile in the corners. Uh, and let's try it here. Factor paces on a corner. Okay, pretty much the same as well. Yeah, there, there's a little bit paddling, but it's not too much. And... It handles way better than the 5WA. So I'm a little bit biased now with the 2 w because I really like that uh, crossover now. But this one is just even with that 2 w And like the 5WA, same tire noise and same response with the engine. Let's put you back to our oh, just the normal mode. I even forgot, same layout here in the center console. Then the sport button here in the east, just below the parking brake. Yeah, same response. That's what I didn't mention as well in the 5W8 review. The uh, the response of the transmission and gearbox is alright, but I found the engine feels like more of a naturally aspirated engine. It's not like the 2W8 where it gives you all the turbo boost in the world. Here, look. It's just, this one's more linear. There. More of a progressive um, power with the engine. But it's still pretty peppy. And I understand now with most of the people and fellow car reviewers as well, they like this T008. I understand now why as well because it's the more powerful car, let's not forget, against the 2 8 and a little bit more peppy than the 5 8 to drive. Wow. This is wicked. Actually, I not expected to drive all three Peugeots today. If I got to drive them all back to back, they're all good, I gotta say. And make no mistake, I like the 5008 more than the T008, but this one's really good as well. Wow. I'm stunned with 
with this performance of the TWA. Right. What else to talk about? I didn't mention this in my 5008 review. The fuel consumption of that was around 8.9 to 9 kilometers per liter. Same diving style with all three. And this one, what am I doing now? Oh. Hence, being the shorter car as well, this one's been averaging 9.4 kilometers per liter. So that's what I like as well with the new wave of Peugeot's, except the Traveler here. They're all fuel efficient, despite having a lot of power, they're all peppy, they're fun to dive, they're still fuel efficient. They're all good. I mean, if you want any of them, you go right ahead and buy them. So, what else to talk about here? With this TWA, almost exactly the same diving dynamics as the 5AA. Hence the shorter wheelbase, so this means it's less, little less stable than the 5008, but way more fun to dive in the twisties than the 5008, and a little bit shy of my benchmark Peugeot, the 2008. and 2 double eight, the suspension is firm but no means an uncomfortable car but more of the sportier side as well but this one's a little bit more floaty than the 2 double eight. so as well the price of this is sorry miss I forgot 2.210 <laughs> all right so yeah. that's still cheaper than the previous pre-facelift model which is actually the same price now as the 5 double eight because like all of the pursuits now they are all made now in Malaysia so, since I've driven all three, what's the one I would take home? I think you already guessed it by now, the 2008. That's the crossover for me. Yeah, the third back is, I don't have my glorious paddle shifters, but hey, it still drives really, really good. So, that concludes my review of new wave of Peugeot. So, I'd like to thank Peugeot Alabang, Auto Icon, Miss Teen over here, and Sir Raj for making this review possible. So, if you want to buy Peugeot, you may contact her. This, her details are right here and in the description down below. So, hope you guys like and subscribe. And Peugeot Philippines, please, may have a lend out piece of the traveler. So, bye-bye, guys. Bye. <laughs>